Hey guys, hope you're whole, having an awesome day. Today I'm going to show you the basics of how to make a good bone broth. So it doesn't matter whether you're using chicken or beef or pork or whatever kind of meat or bones that you want to use, it's totally fine. Um, but the, the premise of it is, is that for centuries, people actually lived on things that were made off of broth. But what happens in our convenience society today is that we grab tetra packs full of broth or canned things or canned soups or prepared soups, or we're ordering things from fast food restaurants or other types of chain restaurants that really are definitely not providing us with nutrients, even though we're eating like a healthy soup. Hey, Amber. Um, so what I wanted to do, it's actually super easy um, in terms of the work that's involved, but it is a lot of process. So you wanna do it on a, uh, on a day or a couple of days where you have time to do it. So first, this, is, this part is just gonna be showing you how I'm gonna roast the, uh, the veggies and the bones first. Um, so the, let me just start with the fact that where the bones come from is super, super, super important. I think a lot of us think, you know, when we're trying to figure out what we're eating, like organics and things like that, we're often thinking, okay, well, our vegetables are our fruits, but one of the most important things you can do is start getting, start, start sourcing, find yourself a source near where you live, um, like a, a local butcher, a local farmer, whatever, and try to get as close to that source as you can, as opposed to the grocery stores, because... We need the good meats that are coming from places where the animals are raised outside in the natural sunlight, where they're roaming around freely, where they're eating grass and normal things, and where they're not just, you know, being pumped through in a commercial line, which is what most chickens and pigs especially um, are raised in nowadays. It's just like the artificial light in the big, huge barns. It's just, it's a toxic environment. And so the more, if you've been following me for a while, hold on, I'm just in the middle of a video. How about try this one? Um, the remote's not working on the TV. This is a real problem. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so if you've been following me for a while, you have heard that one of the keys to weight loss, for example, is reducing the amount of toxins in your body. Because we live in an environment that's very toxic, a lot of us are in very high stress jobs, which is very toxic. We eat a lot of pesticides on our fruits and vegetables. We get a lot of hormones, growth hormones, and antibiotics through our foods and things like that. And it all adds up to toxins in our body. Um, good morning, Amber. If you have any questions as I go, just pop them in there and I can check what you're asking. Um, so one of the most important things is to make sure that we're also consuming meat that is raised in a way where that's not super toxic because where our toxins stored is adipose tissue, which is literally fat. So fat acts like bubble wrap for toxins in our bodies and same goes for animals. So you wanna make sure that you're getting grass fed beef, bones, um, free range chickens um, and pork that's raised like on a farm outside with normal food and they're running around in their sunlight because especially pigs really, really need that vitamin D, they can actually photosynthesize with their skin and you can actually use pigs as a good source of vitamin D, but not if they're not ever exposed to it. So that's just a small thing. But when it comes to making bone broth, which can be the base for tons of different things you can make, we use a lot of homemade soups here um, in our house and also, but if you, you can freeze this stuff when you're done with it and you can use it like if you like to just cook it in little stir fries or just little amounts, you could freeze them in um, ice cube trays or if you're using bigger amounts because you want to cook it with risotto or quinoa or rice or whatever to add that yummy, yummy flavor, that deep, rich flavor without adding just a bunch of powdered fake crap, then you can freeze it in like smaller containers that are the right measurement for how much your family typically would eat. And then you just throw it in the fridge the night before you know you're going to make your dish and then it's ready to go as, as a liquid in your rice or in your whatever you're making the next day. So. That said, what I'm gonna do is show you, first we're gonna roast the vegetables and the, the bones to really pull that flavor out of it. Um, I'm gonna roast the bones first for a little bit just because they're still frozen because I didn't pull them out last night, as usual. But um, I wanted to show you the prep part too and then I'll add the veggies in in about 20 minutes. Um, and then later I'm gonna come back and do another video on how to actually make the broth itself which is pretty straightforward. You're just gonna add a whole bunch of water and let it simmer for 12 to 24 hours. So for any of you who wanna do this kind of thing and then leave um, for the day or whatever, you can do it in, a, in a, a slow cooker as well. But the roasting part obviously has to happen in the oven. So all you do is grab like, um, 
what you might call it, like a roasting pan or something or an oven safe pot. I use my big soup pot because you're gonna have, it's like gravy, you know, when you have like the bits and the drippings in the bottom, that's like some of the best part for the flavor. What do you use the, I can't see that, hold on. What do you, I use the broth for? Soups. We use tons of soup here and also for, if you wanna add it as your base instead of water for cooking rice, quinoa, all those kinds of things. I can do another video on that stuff too or I can do it later. Anyway, so I have a big, huge padernal pot. This is like my favorite thing ever. It's a huge soup pot. If you're gonna put this kind of effort into something, you might as well make a big batch of it, right? So all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of grapeseed oil, not olive oil, because olive oil actually gets destroyed um, after like 350. So if you look at the, the temperatures where oils get destroyed, like the, the acid chains in the like the omega chains or whatever, the fatty acids that you actually need that are good fats, they actually get destroyed at a certain temperature. So grapeseed oil can withstand this kind of heat, olive oil cannot, that's why we use that. And so I have a bunch of stuff here from a local ranch actually that is grass fed beef. And I'm just gonna take these and I've already put a little bit of grapeseed oil in there. So I'm just gonna like roll them around and coat them in a little bit of oil. So I have three bones. So roughly for a big pot this size, I'm gonna do about five pounds worth of bones roughly that's about three of these things they kind of look like a big steak but there's huge bones in them here, let me see if i can show you see the bone this is mostly bone here there's super 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 nutrient rich stuff that comes out of the marrow in bones right that's why we're using bones for bone broth and it's the part that is like a superfood that you actually can't really recreate with other things so gut health so important for the good bacteria. It's reducing inflammation with this kind of stuff. I can get into that in another video if you want to know the nutrition side of it more. Um, but also boosting your immunity. The reason that we all think chicken noodle soup when, when we're sick is because back in the day they used to have real bone broth from chicken carcasses, right? And act actually it's like a huge immune booster. So to keep your gut healthy or to help replenish it very quickly, the like true bone broth that you make properly is actually one of the best things that you can ever take for medicine. Okay, so literally I'm just like rolling those around and I'm gonna just fire them in the oven. And then in about 20 minutes, like I said, I'll show you what I'm gonna add. Set the timer because I'm pregnant and I never remember anything anymore. Okay. So basically, I'm gonna take a bunch of celery that I washed. I'm gonna chop it, chop, chop it. I'm gonna chop it. Um, I'm gonna chop it into big, huge, rough chop pieces. I got carrots, I did the same thing. I just washed them. I'm just gonna take the, the tops off of them just cause you don't have to, but I don't know, I always feel like, I don't, I don't want them in my broth. I don't know why, but you totally could. And then you take onions and you can peel them and you just rough chop them into four. Um, Martha Stewart says you don't even have to take the outside off. So that's totally up to you. I usually do just because if the onions didn't come from our garden, like if we're out, then we're just buying them at the store. So I usually just do that just because you never know what's at the store. You can't really wash the outside of an onion properly. So anyways, I'll just like take the bottoms off and then I'll just cut them into four really quickly. So I have onions, celery, and carrots, rough chopped. And then in order to help pull the... Well, I'll just start that on the next video. I was gonna say, in order to pull the stuff out of the bones to help that, you add a little bit of, um, you can add slices of lemon, real lemon, or you can add um, also apple cider vinegar, just a couple of teaspoons um, into your broth, like while it's gonna simmer, once you're adding the water, because it will help pull that goodness out. And then as you're, as you're boiling your soup, just in case you don't catch the next video, you're just gonna, Scoop the top, there's gonna to be foam and stuff that comes up and excess fat, and you're just gonna scoop that off and do a bowl and then just throw it in the garbage or in your compost or wherever you're putting it. Anyway, so that's literally how easy it is to start bone broth. So you're gonna roast the vegetables, and if my bones were thawed, then I would roast it all together in one um, for about 40 minutes. So I'm gonna do 20 minutes first, then I'm gonna do another 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna just, I mean, my vegetables will be fine after 20 minutes. You can do it in a, a full 40 after that too if you want. Now, guys, don't forget, when it comes to this stuff, there is no perfect recipe. This is not like baking, it's not a science. Just understand the basic concept and then do whatever you want with it. That's the biggest thing that I find that people are struggling with is feeling like they're not confident enough to try stuff. 
So just try it. When I when it comes to later on, when I show you how to make soup with the with the broth that I'm making right now, you'll see that I just fire stuff in there. Like it, there's no right or wrong ma way to make a soup other than the fact that you want to roast them first to pull that ultimate flavor out, and then you want to boil it or simmer it, like just under boil for a really long time to be able to pull that goodness out into the water and you just leave it sit there. You don't stir it, you don't do anything to it. You just let that sit, right? Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions about that, please drop them below. If you're watching the replay, please just drop re replay so I know that you stopped by and hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you on part two. Cheers.